three goals for today. Turning this piece of fabric into white linen fall pants. I thrifted this years ago and it has survived every fabric cleanup that I've done so far. So I thought that it was time to make something with it. Then I also want to stay hydrated. And I also want to make a lasagna. So I first set my hydration clock on 9.30. I'm gonna have to use the toilet a lot today. I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle. The length of this rectangle should be the length that you want your trousers or pants to have plus 10 centimeters or 4 inches. So simply measure your legs and add 10 centimeters or 4 inches to this. The width of this rectangle should be a quarter of your hip measurement. Uh, plus 6 centimeters or 2.3 inches. Now you need a pair of pants that sits super comfortable and is not too stretchy. Turn those around and you're gonna notice that there's a difference between the front and the back. I started with the back so I pinned it down on the sewing line. It's very important that you pin it where the sewing line ends. And now I'm going to copy the shape of the pants. Align the part of the pants that I marked right here with the line of the rectangle and the top and now we can easily copy the shape of the crotch onto the pattern. Now there's only one thing left to do. Measure the crotch that you just added to the pattern and also add this on the ends. Now draw a line between the two. This line is very important. The first pants that I ever made, I did it without a line and the crotch comes out really, really weird. Then I cut out the pattern for the back part. Now I'm going to repeat all of these steps, but for the front part of the pants. Now you also have the front pattern, but the front pattern needs pockets. This is not optional. You need pockets in this. This That should be a law or something. I measured 18 centimeters. That is 7 inches. Then on the top of the pattern you draw 3 centimeters, that's 1.5 inches, and then you connect these lines. Now you made the front part of the pocket, but we also need the actual pocket. So for that I'm just going to draw a rectangle, double the size that I want the pocket to be. For the size of this rectangle, uh, this depends on the size of your pants but make sure that is fit. The length of my rectangle was 30 centimeters that is drum roll please 11 inches. I can't really give you the width because this should depend on the width of your pattern. Make it two to three centimeters, one to one and a half inch shorter than the pattern. Then I cut this out and I folded it double. The only thing that you need to do is you need to copy the front of the pocket on one part of your pocket piece. So copy this and cut it out. And now you have a perfect pocket piece. And now it's time for the fabric. I'm first going to iron this and then I will cut every piece that I just made twice. Next 
Next, I laid out all of the pieces on the fabric. And like I already said, I cut them out twice. I use beer bottles, glasses and other stuff that I found in my house as weights. Because this way I don't have to buy them. And because the pattern is quite big, I shift them around while I cut to have the cleanest possible cut. I'm almost there, but I first took a little hydration break. After cutting all of the pieces out and staying hydrated, I decided to take a little break from sewing and to start making the lasagna. It's the first time that I made fresh pasta and it's actually quite fun to do. I really recommend it. Once the pasta was made, I let it rest for a couple of hours and then I cleaned up the mess that I made. But luckily I have my cute little helper. While my pasta dough was having some well-earned rest, I set the pens together. I started by pinning and sewing the back to the front, but only the crotch, nothing else. So pin the full crotch and sew it with a simple straight stitch around one centimeter or half an inch from the edge. Then I pressed those seams nice and flat. This is one of the things that I find so weirdly satisfying to do. I'm first going to up the value of the front part of the pants by adding the pockets. And then I will introduce it to the back part and attach them in what will hopefully be a loving, long-lasting relationship. Once this was done, I ironed the seams nice and flat. This will give you the neatest results. Then I top stitched this part of the pocket. I also added two small folds to the front of the pants uh, to give it a bit of fit and also to give it some more dimension. So the fold is one centimeter or half an inch. So I measured this and then I also made sure that it was symmetrical. ironed and sewn the folds in place by zigzag stitching on the top. Then I finished off the front of the pants by finishing up the pocket. You simply need to fold it from a rectangle into a square and then you sew it to the side and the front and also don't forget to close the loose end, otherwise this pocket will be quite useless. And 
Now it's time to get out your inner cupido because we're going to connect these two pieces into what will hopefully be a long lasting relationship. I laid the two pieces together and now I'm going to pin and sew them together seam by seam. I started with the seam on the inside. sewn this seam with one centimeter or half an inch seam allowance then I also gave it that good satisfying press with the ironer then I repeated the exact same steps for the seam at the outside of the pants. And before I added the waistband, I rolled out that pasta because we cannot forget the lasagna. Garfield would be really, really disappointed and mad if we forgot the lasagna. So I rolled out the pasta and I cut it into a lasagna suitable shape. I'm going to add a waistband with an elastic inside. So I copied the size of the pants onto a piece of fabric that I folded a double and I turned this into a waistband with a width of 10 centimeters, that's 4 inches, but I ended up changing it to 8 centimeters, I think that's 3.5 inches, just because I wanted it a little bit smaller. Following, I zigzag stitched around the edges of the waistband so it cannot unravel in my washing machine. I did this for all of the pieces, not just the waistband. <music> And now I'm going to add some fusible interfacing. After that, I folded over the edges of the waistband around one centimeter or half an inch. This will make it easier for me to pin and sew the waistband to the pants. For my own comfort, I will always choose elastics over zippers. So I cut the elastic one fourth of the waistband. I'm only going to sew it in the back. And then I folded the waistband double so I could sew it into a round. And now I'm going to pin and sew the elastic to this. Be sure to sew it with a zigzag stitch. Then I realized that the shop and markets were about to close, so I fastly biked to the market to buy salmon, spinach and other stuff that I would need to finish the lasagna. Now you're gonna see me finishing up the waistband and you're gonna notice that I'm wearing different clothes. That's because I finished up the waistband the next day in the evening when I had time because I didn't have enough time to make the lasagna and the waistband. But for like the coherency of the video, I just added this in directly after. So I pinned and sewn the waistband to the pants. I sewn this with a straight stitch. Be sure to pull the waistband out fully when you sew this for the elastic. The final step of making the pants is finishing up the edge. I decided to do this with a little bit of inner facing. This gives a neater finish and it also adds a little bit of weight and I feel like this fabric and this model of pants can benefit 
benefits from a little bit of weight at the edge. So I added the inner facing, then I folded it over twice, ironed this in, and I sewn it with also a straight stitch. And here you have a zoom in on the final result. I love this pants. It's, it's so comfortable. It really feels like I'm wearing sweatpants, but it looks a tad more stylish. The elastic in the back is so comfortable. There are a lot of different ways to style these trousers, but for the moment I kept it simple. I just put on a white blouse, my white shoes, and then this bag also fell into my arms. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see me finishing up the lasagna, that's next. Otherwise, thank you. Bye. Before I could move on to the fun layering part, I first had to make the sauce. Um, I'm going to make a lasagna with spinach and some and ricotta cheese. I first wanted to make a classic one, but this was a lot of work and I have never really made my own lasagna. So I decided to go with another version of it, kind of a Verdi version, if that makes any sense. So I made the sauce with spinach, ricotta and milk. Then I prepared my casserole and I started laying up my lasagna. I first laid down a couple of pasta sheets, then I added some sauce, I added some, some more sauce and some tomatoes. I also started sun drying my own tomatoes a couple of months ago, so I'm also going to use these to add some extra tastes. And once I laid the first layer, I kept on layering until I was satisfied with my lasagna. And then I added way too much cheese because, you know, I regret a lot of things in life, but I will never regret adding too much cheese to any recipe. And 45 minutes later, I had my fresh lasagna. I know that the top is a little bit burnt and it maybe doesn't look the best. Okay, it looks quite okay. And it tasted really, really good. Okay, I'm ending this video by finishing my water bottle. So all three goals of today were completed. Thank you so much for watching this. Bye!